Hi guys, I'm Mark on RC Nerd 74. Today's tutorial is about how to make a spinner fit perfect on your prop. A lot of uh, spinners are uh, simply pre-cut for uh, any kind of blades and like this you have big holes which doesn't look really nice and in today's tutorial I'll show you every step you can do to make your spinner and your prop your nose of the plane look absolutely perfect and clean. First thing you have to do is to choose a spinner which has no pre-cut openings for the propeller blades like this you can choose your prop, your fitting spinner and then you can do the custom shape of the blade openings. To make a spinner work perfectly there are a few more things you have to be aware of. One thing is that the back plate of the spinner often do not perfectly fit the propeller shaft so the back plate has some play on the shaft. Due to this you get vibrations. Vibrations lead to different issues. You have uh, more wear on your bearings, you have vibrations on the whole plane, you have some loss of power, you have less flight time because of higher amps, all that stuff, things you don't want to have on your plane. And so it definitely makes sense to solve this issue. On this sample with center screw on the spinner, you have also two things which you have to be aware of. Uh, the adapter often doesn't come with the spinner, so you have to check and have the hardware, the screw, to make the spinner fit on your prop adapter. And the screw also can have some play in the center hole of your spinner, so this can also lead to vibrations. So I show you everything uh, to avoid all these issues and have a perfectly uh, centered spinner which has uh, the lowest possible vibrations. First let's have a look at the back plate. If you just have slight play on the propeller shaft it's okay to take some tape, wrap it around. You have to try out how much tape it takes to eliminate the complete play of the back plate of the spinner. That's one solution, but if you have, for example, 8mm propeller shaft and 10mm hole on your back plate, you cannot wrap it with tape. That's just too much tape that won't stay in place. So what I figured out for my builds is that I take O-rings and I fill up the gap with O-rings. So you have to choose the right uh, thickness of the O-ring and pull it over the propeller shaft like this you also can eliminate easily up to two millimeters of play or even more uh, and center the back plate perfectly on the propeller shaft. When the back plate is perfectly centered on the propeller shaft you can install the back plate on the propeller shaft, put on the propeller, put on the nut of the propeller to keep it in place then it's time to do the first steps to make these propeller blade openings. First of all, you have to mark the blade position on the back plate. Like this you can see how wide the opening has to be for your propeller blades. You also measure the height of the blade to know how high the hole will be. And then you take off the propeller. Just remove the back plate from the propeller shaft and put on the spinner cone on your back plate. Like this you can transfer the markings of the back plate to the cone of the spinner. So you have the exact width of the propeller blades and the height of the propeller blades. You can mark everything on the spinner cone. And like this you are ready to do the first step to cut out the shape for the propeller blades. The first shape I always cut to get these openings is a simple triangle shape. For this side take the Dremel and the cutting disc and I simply cut the triangle for each blade. Like this you have the raw shape. Then it's a lot of sanding you have to do to get the perfect round shape of your propeller blades. For this I also use the Dremel for the raw round shape. You always have to put the spinner comb back onto the blades to check 
how exact the uh, shape already fits the blades and you repeat this uh, process until you have a raw shape which looks pretty good but is perhaps a tiny bit too small still so you can do the fine sanding by hand to get a perfect round shape. I always have the best results to hand sand all the final shapes of uh, carbon parts to get the best possible result. Then let's talk about the center screw on the tip of the spinner to keep the spinner in place on the back plate. You have different solutions of propeller shafts. Some of the propeller shafts have an uh, inner thread which helps to easy screw in a uh, screw from the front end of the spinner. If you have this inner uh, thread, it's pretty easy. You just have to choose the right size of your screw. There's only one possible uh, issue you can have if there is needed a very long screw and you don't have such a screw. You can take a spacer and an Allen screw and put these together so you have uh, extension of your inner thread and like this you're closer to the front end of the spinner and like this you can take uh, any length of screw depends on the spacer you take and you can use a 30 40 millimeter screw whatever if you have a propeller shaft with no inner thread you need to make a custom part which has the right inner thread for your propeller shaft and the other end the inner thread for your center spinner screw so i had to outsource this part to make it fit perfect it's a good solution but it's a bit more expensive than if you already have your inner thread for the center screw on your uh, propeller shaft on the example you can see here the screw was narrower than the hole on the spinner so i took some shrink tube put it around the screw and like this I was able to minimize the play of the screw to a minimum which makes sure to keep the screw perfectly centered if you tighten up the screw. If all these steps are done your setup is already finished except one step. What I always do is not only to balance the propeller but also balancing the back plate and the cone of the spinner because also here you can have massive vibrations if these parts are not well balanced. And in this case, it was massively off balance. So I had to drill a big hole into the back plate and sanded the cone from the inside and also had to do additional sanding on the inner side of the back plate just to make everything perfectly balanced and to avoid any vibrations on the whole spinner and propeller setup. If you cannot sand the back plate or the cone of the spinner, another solution is to put on some tape or you can also do some small epoxy dots on the inside of the back plate or also on the inside of the spinner cone and balance the spinner and back plate like this. So there's no need for sanding. The advantage of sanding is that you don't add additional weight. So the weight is the absolute minimum if you sand, if you remove material instead of putting material onto your spinner. If all the balancing is done, your propeller and spinner setup is ready to put on your plane and have some fun on the flying field. This is it for today's short tutorial. I hope some tips were helpful. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next one. Happy flying. Bye bye.